unlimited cloud storage. No, I'm not kidding you, this is possible. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a Synology NAS, a Docker container, and CrashPlan to have unlimited cloud storage. Oh, and by the way, don't let all that discourage you. It only takes about probably five to 10 minutes to get this set up. Let's do it. First, I gotta get my current storage solution out of my data center. Let's go check it out. You see, your data is important, right? Everyone has data, whether it's just your personal stuff like family photos, family videos from vacations, or it's for your small business and you have a ton of stuff, SQL databases and, and accounting files and all kinds of stuff. I don't know what you have, but it's important. I happen to have both personal and business data here in this data center, but let me show you what I have. So what I have right now is a uh, just an external hard drive, the 10 terabyte external hard drive. See this guy here? That's what I have all my data on is horrible because I've heard it said if your data doesn't exist in three places it doesn't exist so now I'm gonna unplug this stuff and take it home okay time to head back okay and since we're in deep Ellum a really uh, hipster part of Dallas gotta get some coffee now let's get some coffee what'd you say Can I have coffee? no actually yeah maybe just a little bit okay. gotta start them early all right, so this is a coffee roaster I have not been to in Dallas. They're local, this is their joint. I've been buying their coffee forever. It's called Noble Coyote Coffee Roasters. It's like the money shot, um, oh, if yeah, it works yeah, out. For, uh... Man, that coffee is lit. <laughs> if you uh, want to check these guys out, Noble Coyote Coffee Roasters, they do ship, so check it out below. It's not sponsored by them unless they want to. It's just, it's really great coffee, so check them out. So I don't know how many of you actually use something like this, a uh, big fat external hard drive to store all your data. Probably most of you, right? And maybe even if you're a small business, you probably put a lot of your important data on something like this. Um, problem with this is that this is a single point of failure. It's one hard drive. Um, if I drop this, if <laughs> if it gets corrupted or it just dies on me, I lose all of my precious data, all the family vacations, all the photos. And if it's for your business, you lose all your you know accounting data and stuff. It's not good. So I've been jonesing for uh, a good NAS solution. Uh, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. And a huge shout out and thank you to the people over at Synology. Um, they sent me this unit for free just to look at, play with, and talk about. And it's now my storage solution. So, no more of this guy. <laughs> now in this video, I'm not gonna go over all the things it can do from you know being a Plex server or uh, you can host VMs on it, Docker containers, Active Directory, DNS. I mean, you can do a ton of stuff on it. And we'll, we'll talk about that later, but this video is all about unlimited cloud storage, which is super important to me. Because I have a ton of storage. I take video of my family all the time. Plus I do these videos, right? I have to keep copies of these. So I've got terabytes on terabytes on terabytes of storage. Google Drive, Amazon, all that stuff won't cut it for me. I need something that can give me unlimited. Google, oh my God. Now real quick, the things I'm about to mention, I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, Synology sent me this unit, That's that was it. The service we're going to use for our unlimited cloud storage, CrashPlan, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just an amazing product. Get this, the small business, the CrashPlan Pro plan <laughs> uh, is only $10 a month. $10 a month for unlimited storage. That's ridiculous. So using this beautiful box here, this Synology Cloud Station 10, 19 plus, I think that's what it's called. Sorry, DS1019 plus. I have three six terabyte drives in this guy. Um, they are one volume, rated together, so I've got 10 gigabytes of total usage or available storage. This is the beauty right here. Five bays, oh, it's gorgeous. It has eight gigabytes of memory, DDR3, quad core CPU. So this thing, even though I'm primarily using it for storage, it's also now my Plex server, my backup for my VMs, and just a ton of other stuff that I am not gonna mention right now. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a cool thing. I recommend you get one, it's amazing. However, let's talk about the real stuff. 
Let's talk about unlimited cloud storage. Because while this thing is great, and while I do have my hard drives tethered together or in a RAID to where if one hard drive fails, I can replace it and I don't lose any of my data. That's good. But what if this thing fails? What if this box fails? Well, then I lose all my data. And I'm not okay with that. Are you okay with that? I'm not. That's why I always look for a good cloud storage plan. So that my data can exist in more places than just my house. That's a single point of failure. I don't like that. So let's talk about crash plan. Now, I will say this. Crash plan is more for the personal or small business user. Uh, I would recommend if you're a medium to large size business, I would recommend using Azure, AWS, Google Cloud. They're more robust. And I'll show you how to use Azure uh, as your backup solution with this guy too in a later video. But let's check out CrashPlan. Okay, I'm gonna get signed into my NAS. My network attached storage, I named it Chuck NAS. Sign in. It's got a beautiful web portal where you can actually install all kinds of stuff. It even has a package center. So if I click on the package center over here, you can install a bunch of things. So just looking at this, ooh, yeah, it does a lot. But what we care about is Docker. I scroll down here, where is it at? Docker, where are you? There it is, Docker. I already have mine installed. I'll open that up. If you don't already have it installed, install it. Now, some of you may be wondering, what in the world is Docker? What's a Docker container? How is it different from a, a virtual machine? Heck, what's a virtual machine? I actually have a great nugget on this in my Azure training course. So I'll play that portion right now. Containers, they're like VMs, but they take it to the next level. They're more efficient. They're, some would say, better. Now what we're doing here with containers is we're still doing virtualization per se, but whereas over here we're virtualizing hardware, over here we're virtualizing software. Hmm. So in our example, let's say this operating system right here is uh, Ubuntu, a flavor of Linux. We want to install these two apps, but they have different requirements, different dependencies, and on a normal operating system they cannot coexist. But if we use containers, what it allows us to do it's so, so cool, is we can bundle the app and all its dependencies and create this little isolated island, little environment. So we'll take it, and we'll put our app on the operating system. And we can do another, and even still another. Now you might notice that I'm actually drawing these uh, in different sizes, because different apps could be smaller, take up less resources, while another app might be bigger and take up more resources. So each one of these little apps here are their own little island with all their own dependencies to make them run just the way they need to. And they can't see each other. They're kind of bird boxing it. They're blindfolded. They don't know uh, each other unless you want them to. And they don't interfere. So these blue markers here are just kind of uh, lines of separation, kind of borders. And that's, that's why we compare this to virtualization because we're essentially virtualizing the operating system and installing little apps, and they could be big apps, within your one operating system, and they have everything they need to run. So that's Docker in a nutshell. Let's uh, keep going. Now the reason we have to use Docker is because CrashPlan does not have an, a special app in Synology. Synology can support a bunch of different backup solutions uh, from Azure to AWS, Google Cloud to all kinds of stuff, but they don't support CrashPlan. If you want to check out CrashPlan, uh, you can go to their CrashPlan for small business. You can actually do a free trial. And let me just confirm the price real quick. Yeah, here we go. Just $10 a month per device. What's cool is I can use that Synology as my one device, and I dump all of my stuff to it. And you'll need an account with CrashPlan to obviously do this. Now, I've been using CrashPlan for a while from that hard drive, from that one hard drive, which wasn't ideal for me. So you see, I see I have three and a half terabytes here, but I'm going to switch it to using my Synology NAS. Now, there's not an app for CrashPlan with Synology, so we have to do something different. Thankfully, you look over here, this person, Jay Lesage, or however you say their name, created a Docker container that has CrashPlan Pro, for small business, and it's so stupid easy to use, it's not even funny. Now I'm just showing you this page so you can see that there's a whole thing, you can install it on a bunch of different stuff. It's a Docker container. Anything that supports Docker can actually install this. We don't care about that. We're gonna get back to our Synology NAS. I'm gonna open up my Docker stuff here first. So I'm gonna jump over to the registry, and in the search bar I'm gonna type in crash plan. Click search, and wouldn't you know, there's that same exact Docker container we just saw on that web page. I'm going to select this and click download. You can select from various versions. Um, I'm wagering you probably want to click the latest. So click latest and select. And if I jump on over to image, there she is. It's still downloading. We'll just chill out here. All right, mine is done. I'm going to select this guy and click launch. So now we're creating our Docker container. I'm going to name it net chuck crash. I'll give it highest privilege. Um, I will do a resource limitation to one gig of memory. Then I'm going to click advanced settings. 
and I'm going to hop on over to the volume. This is where you're going to map what's on your Synology, your drives, to what the crash plan Docker container can see. So I'm going to click Add Folder. I'll select, uh, let's see, Network Chuck, of course. Select that, and I'll mount it to Storage. That's the path that uh, crash plan is going to be looking for. I'll apply that, click Next, and uh, pretty much nothing else after this. It will run by itself. Click Apply. I'm going to jump over to the Overview, and there it is. My Docker container is now running. I'm going to jump over to the Container tab and look at it running there. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm going to select it, click on Details, and... Okay, cool. How do we get to it? It will be the URL of your NAS, so mine is Chuck NAS, and then the port will be 32775. Now the actual port it will, would need if it were not running on a Docker container would be 5800, but Synology takes care of that for us in Docker. So that'll be our port 32775. So I'll open up a new tab, do Chuck NAS colon 32775. <gasps> look at that, crash plan. I'm gonna log in, don't look at my password. Now I will say this, it, sometimes it doesn't log in when you first start this machine up. So if you go in here and click restart on that uh, Docker container, pay attention to the, the port it has, because it did change on me. Get back in there, and you should be able to log in the second time around. Click continue. Yeah, there we go. Now if you're an existing crash plan user, you can replace an existing device. I'm not doing that. I'm going to be adding a new device. Am I sure? I sure am. I'm going to click on Manage Files to select which files I want to back up. I'm going to uncheck Config, and I'm going to back up my storage folder. And if I jump in there, I can see... Actually, I forgot. It can't see it yet. It doesn't have rights. I need to change that in Synology. So your crash plan Docker container needs permissions to access your storage, your file storage. I would recommend creating a special user just for this. So how can we do that? Well, we'll go to our main menu, click on Control Panel, jump over to Users, Let's create a new one. I'll name this Crash Plan. Uh, set a fancy password. Click Next. I won't add them to any groups. I'll just click Next. And then what does he have access to? Well, I'm going to click on Network Chuck and do Read Write. Click Next. Click Next. Click Next. Next. And Apply. So we got Crash Plan set up, but we need his user ID. You can't really see it from here, so we're going to have to connect to the terminal. We're going to have to SSH into this box. You need that enabled, so if we scroll down right here from the control panel, go to Terminal and SNMP, you'll just click on the Enable SSH Service. That will enable it. You'll click Apply. And then using your favorite SSH client, I'm going to use PuTTY. Oh, I love PuTTY. I'm going to log into my Synology box, which I named Crash Plan. That's what it matches to in DNS. Oh, no, that's not what I did. Come on, guys. You're supposed to call me on that. I named it Chuck Nass. That crash plan on the brain. Chuck Nass. I'm going to log in as an admin account that has access to my Synology, not the crash plan account we just created. So mine was Network Chuck, and my password I kept in LastPass. I'm going to paste that in, and I'm in. So we need the ID and the group ID for this user account. So we'll put in the command ID crash plan, the username that you created. Aha, there it is. So the user ID is 1028, and the group ID will be 100. Where do we put that? Well, let's go back to our Synology page here. Get back to the Docker application, and on this container, it should be shut down. We're going to click on Edit, and then jump over to Environment. Under User ID, we're going to put the user ID number that you just pulled up from your SSH session. Mine was 1028 for the user ID, so I'll put that guy there. And for the group ID, I'm going to put 100. Click Apply, and then I'm going to start him back up by hitting that little knob here. Pew, pew, let's switch. I'm going to click him, click Details, so I can see what port he has now. 32781, okay. I'm going to open up that tab. Chuck Nass. Colon 32781. All right, starting up. I'm going to click on Manage Files so I can see what's going on here and jump into that storage account that we mapped stuff. Ah, yes, it can now see it. Because now he has a user account that can access and has permissions to these files. And I can just select the files that I want to sync up, click Save, and then I'll select the destination that I want it to back up to, which is my account, the Crash Print Plan, 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 uh, Plan Pro Online, click Save. Now this won't be an involved how-to on how to do all the cool stuff in Crash Plan, or Synology for that matter, but this is how you get the basics set up. So that, guys, is the cheapest and 
probably the coolest way to get unlimited cloud storage. So important for me because I never want my stuff to go away. I don't want to lose my data. It's so important to me. So having that crash plan, unlimited plan for 10 bucks a month and then using it with my Synology NAS is perfect. Now you can use crash plan without Synology. You can just get one of these guys, one of these massive hard drives and just have this synced up to crash plan. That's fine. But then you got a single point of failure here at your house or at your business. Just one measly hard drive. Plus, Synology does a ton of other cool stuff. Anyways, guys, that's about it. Uh, let me know what you thought. I know this isn't my typical, you know, network CCNA video, but hey, I love everything IT, and I hope you guys do too. Um, any questions, let me know. Need any help with this, let me know. Everything can be looked at at the links below. If you want to get the Synology NAS, I will have that link below. Thanks again to the folks at Synology for just sending me that thing, because I, I really need, I was about to buy one. I was going to go out and buy one, and they just said, hey, can we send you one? I'm like, Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you may. Whew, well, that's about it. Um, man, all you guys studying for certifications, on my last video, I asked you to list your why, and oh my goodness, so many amazing responses. Thank you. It's amazing to see that. I know it's going to help so many people just by reading that. So if you're studying for your CCNA, A+, Security+, whatever it is, man, keep going. Stay inspired. Stay strong. Remember that why. And uh, that's about it, guys. I'll catch you guys later. Oh, no.